Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here, coming at you from the middle of a heat wave. It's 33 degrees in my room here at the moment, or a little over 90 for Americans. And yet, it feels fitting, as we're going to be looking into the hot topic of when to get wheelbarrow and handcart. I covered this topic almost exactly six years ago, but I feel like I'm a bit better at this sort of analysis now, and want to come up with a more nuanced answer that accounts for different strategies. As a quick refresher, Wheelbarrow allows villagers to carry 25% more and move 10% faster, which is a nice bump to their general efficiency, especially to farming, where there's lots of walking around. It costs 175 food and 50 wood, which in terms of total resources is about the same as three villagers, a farm, and three-fifths of a house, and it actually takes the same amount of time to research as three villagers. The fact it's a town center technology makes it fundamentally different from other sorts of eco upgrades. With just one lumberjack, for example, Double Bit Axe will eventually pay for itself, though it will take quite a bit of time. With Wheelbarrow, though, getting it too early actually costs you because it's at the expense of three villagers. To take an extreme example, if you have one villager, you're obviously better off getting three more and quadrupling the size of your economy rather than increasing that one villager's work rate by a small percentage. On the other extreme, with 100 or more villagers, even a relatively small increase in efficiency to all of them will outweigh the benefit of adding three more. So at what point does that flip? If you look around, there are plenty of personal rules that different people have. Some do it by villager number, sometimes it's based off game time, like 16 or 18 minutes, and others use it based on different milestones, like just before going to Castle Age or after their third town center is up. Personally, I've always gravitated towards using villager number, and last time, by using some average villager distributions and collection rates, I came to the conclusion that 44 to 46 total villagers was a good general rule. Though I also noted that if you have more than 16 farmers, that works as well, as farmers get an especially large benefit. This time though, I want to get into some specific builds and examples to see how different strategies affect that number. But first, as a simple rule of thumb, does that 44 to 46 number still hold up after all these years? To find out, I spectated some Arabia team games with players averaging in the top 5% of skill level. At 20 minutes, I paused and took a snapshot of everyone's economies to see how they were distributed. With a sample size of 20 players, I found on average 22% of villagers were on gold, 31% on wood, and 41% on farming, with the odd builder or idle villager. Then, using some fresh gather rates, including doubled up farms this time, and a lumber camp with a bit of a gap to add some realistic inefficiency, I crunched the numbers again and this time got 42 villagers. Again, by far the largest benefit is to farmers, and the fact that this time I used a higher farming proportion brought the number down a bit. The number and inefficiency of your farms is going to move it around, but it emphasizes that getting wheelbarrow as soon as possible isn't always ideal. With the average distribution, getting wheelbarrow at 28 villagers is roughly the same economic benefit of adding two villagers, but remember you gave up three villagers of work time to research it. The Burgundians are probably the most interesting example, as they have access to Wheelbarrow in Dark Age, but it's very unlikely you'll find yourself with 18 farmers or 42 villagers at that point. Just because you can get an upgrade doesn't mean you always should. Of course, this is also why the Vikings are such a strong civilization. Getting Wheelbarrow instantly in Feudal Age means not only the immediate benefit for your farms by adding something like 1.5 to 2 villagers right away, but that it also puts you up 3 villagers on everyone else once they actually get Wheelbarrow for themselves. It's a pretty crazy bonus. But jumping back to that 42 villager number, let's see if we can go a bit deeper. While I found the average was 41% farmers over the 20 players I saw, there was a lot of variability in that depending on their strategy. Within those 20 samples, I saw as little as 19% farmers when going straight archers, and as much as 64% for someone going heavily into cavalry. Clearly, you have very different economies between players doing different strategies. Starting with scouts and knights, a build order that I know is suggested by a pro player is getting wheelbarrow just before going up to castle age when you have 8 to 10 on wood, 16 to 18 on food, and 5 on gold. Starting with those numbers, adding 3 more villagers at that point would grow your economy by 9.1 to 10.3%, depending on if we go with the higher or lower numbers there. Conversely, in that situation, wheelbarrow increases your overall villager efficiency by 8.7%. So it's in the ballpark, maybe slightly too early, but this is where that 16 to 18 farm rule comes in. Here with even just 30 or 32 villagers, we're close to a point that wheelbarrow makes sense because we're so heavily invested in farms. Now just to be clear, that doesn't mean you have to get wheelbarrow at that point. It just means it's roughly giving you the same benefit as three extra villagers, so there isn't clearly a better option. It's not until 19 farms or more in this particular case that wheelbarrow is objectively the better choice. So in this case, that early to mid 40 villager rule instead turns into more like mid 30s because of all the farms. This is even where some personal preference starts to creep in. 
Maybe you put a lot of value on faster moving villagers, so you pick wheelbarrow either here or even earlier. On the other hand, maybe you're conscious of the time cost of having to pay for wheelbarrow all at once, as opposed to paying for the three villagers over time. There's trade-offs either way, and knowing the inflection point of the gather rates is really just a starting place. So that's scouts and knights, which are probably the most food intensive strategy. Now let's jump to the other extreme, and if you're only making archers. One pro build order I found says to get wheelbarrow when you have 10 to 11 on wood, 12 to 14 on food, and 7 on gold. Looking into the gather rates though, that's quite a bit too early. At that point, three villagers are increasing the size of your economy by 9.4 to 10.3%, again depending on which number we pick, and wheelbarrow is only growing it by 7.2 to 7.5%. To me, that shows even an expert player can overestimate the importance of wheelbarrow when going archers, and the cost of that mistake is about 15 resources per minute, so not a massive mistake, but also not ideal. With archers, it's never really going to make sense before 40 villagers at least, though I know even hearing that, lots of people will continue to research it early, which is completely fine, but your reasoning for that shouldn't be because it's good for your economy. I looked at quite a few archer builds, and many of them do recommend it too early, but I don't mean to say that everyone does. In this game, the expert player Leary went almost full archers and won the game with 52 villagers while correctly not picking up wheelbarrow. At the point he won, it's arguably about the time to get it, but you can see how much variability there is and how farms are probably a better indicator than villager numbers. For anyone who likes to do mental math on the fly, a general formula is take your farmers and multiply by 4, then add your lumberjacks, and then half of your miners. If that adds up to 90 or more, then wheelbarrow is definitely a good idea, and if you're under 80, then it's definitely a bad one. If you're in between, then it probably doesn't make a big difference. For example, with 15 farmers and 10 lumberjacks, that's only 70 points, so you'd help your economy more with 3 extra villagers. An even simpler general rule would be to wait until you have 18 farms. Now while I think gather rates are the best way to approach thinking about wheelbarrow in general, I also want to touch on some other factors or situations that can arise. The first is, what if you're housed? At that point, wheelbarrow isn't costing you three villagers, but more like two, as your town center would be idle as you make a house. In a situation where you're housed, picking up wheelbarrow can be a smart way to minimize the impact of town center idle time. Of course, that still doesn't make it ideal and also assumes that you can spare the upfront cost of wheelbarrow, which isn't always the case. There's also the issue of increased bumping on wood lines and gold. This one depends on how well your camps are set up and how saturated they are, but it's true that's not something I've accounted for. And if you know you have a pretty messy economy, you could try to adjust for that on the fly with a slightly earlier wheelbarrow. One factor that I think is important to keep in mind, but also impossible to quantify in something like this, is the faster movement helping villagers escape raids and move around the map. Archers can still outrun villagers with wheelbarrow, but it makes a noticeable difference, and villagers also become nearly the same speed as men-at-arms, which could save the odd villager. That may contribute to a decision to go for wheelbarrow earlier than is economically optimal, as saving a villager has its own value. Just keep in mind the example that if you have 28 villagers with 11 farmers, wheelbarrow is only adding about 2 villagers worth of gathering to your economy, so you're essentially forcing yourself down one villager in the short term. Now this has all been about wheelbarrow, and now I want to briefly touch on handcart. At first glance, handcart is a better upgrade, increasing villager speed by the same plus 10%, but also increasing their carry capacity by another 50%, where wheelbarrow was 25. Strangely though, its effect on farming is less than wheelbarrow, especially for farms right against a mill or town center. Six years ago, I was quite confused about that, but now I know that's because the farm itself has a cap of producing 24 food per minute. The main benefit of handcart for farms is more that the impact of poorly placed farms is lessened by quite a bit, and in this case with doubled up farms, that's captured fairly well. Now we could attempt to do the same sort of analysis with handcart as with wheelbarrow, but something pretty strange happens. Handcart only takes 55 seconds to research, so we're not giving up on 3 villagers, but instead only 2.2. That means using the same method that gave 42 villagers for wheelbarrow is now giving 35 villagers for handcart. Last time I found the number was 40, but this time I'm using significantly worse farms, which dramatically changes the number, but in both cases it's earlier than wheelbarrow. If handcart is so good, does that mean that we should be doing wheelbarrow even earlier so that we can do them back to back? If we combine their effects and compare it to getting 5.2 villagers as if they're just one tech, it suggests that with 14 farmers and 35-ish population, that would be a reasonable thing to do. It makes handcart sound like a tech you should get immediately in Castle Age, but that's almost never done. In my mind, the villager trade-off isn't the best way to approach handcart. Instead, it's the 500 resource cost that determines when you get it and creates the real trade-off. 
Remember, the cost of Wheelbarrow was pretty similar to the three villager alternative, but Handcart is a very expensive tech, and it's not so much the two villagers lost, but whether or not you can afford the 500 resources while also making town centers, farms, villagers, or military. It's almost always going to be worth the town center time, but it's a matter of waiting until a point that you can comfortably afford it. Though I wouldn't argue with anyone who wanted to pick a specific number, like 70 or 80. Also keep in mind that if you're not doubling up a lot of farms yet, then you're really not getting as much out of the tech. So to put it all together, in this revisiting of an old classic topic, I've changed my mind based on new information from 46 to 42 villagers as the most general rule. But as we've seen, a rule based off farmers is probably the better way to go. In retrospect, I wish I had emphasized the farming number more in the previous video and ultimately just thrown out the average villager number entirely. Especially with the scout and archer meta in team games, a single villager number just reflects the middle ground of the two, without capturing either very well. In some strategies, like if you're making a lot of cavalry, you'll probably hit the 17 or 18 farms you need a lot sooner than with something like archers. The ideal point within that spectrum comes down to what units you're making. On the other hand, with handcart, there isn't an analogous tipping point, and it comes down to more when you can absorb its cost without sacrificing something else important, like town centers, villagers, or army, but the worse your farms are, the more you should try to sneak it in. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.